going on, everybody? Hope everyone's having a great day. Starting off with some vibes. Go ahead, smash those likes. Not even sure if it's working. enough of that all right what's going on everybody welcome welcome we have a massive massive pumptastic morning here in crypto land smash those likes if you're having fun like i am because we have a lot to cover as well that's right not only is bitcoin pumping not only is ethereum pumping but it's setting that stage setting that stage for the glorious glorious oh let me actually do this better let me remove that let me reshare the right screen here. I had to do that for the audio. There we go. And we're back. And we're back, baby. All right. All right. So what's going on, everybody? We're ready. We're set up. I'm not sure if that music worked or not. That was my attempt to have fun here. Um, Bitcoin right now is at $47,000. It's AMA Friday. So your questions are going to get answered. We're going to bring you up on screen here. And hopefully we're going to have a really good session, not only getting to the bottom of what's going on right now and telling you exactly, exactly how I'm going to be playing my own stack and investing. I'm going to bring this up a little bit. It's not good enough for support. And how I'm going to be investing over the next few weeks, because the next few weeks are going to be super, super critical. And I want everyone to be really, really aware of what I tell you right now, because pretty much the way I've called this pump, dump, and rebirth here has been the way it's happened. And the NFT scene has been absolutely ferocious while the rest of the market's been boring. So if you were playing this right and following me along, you've probably made some great gains. Again, you made those gains. You made the decision to take those risks. You took on the responsibility and you got the reward if you did play it right. But what's going to happen next is going to surprise you. It's going to shock you. We're going to give away some stuff on this episode. You're definitely going to want to watch it front to back because it's going to be packed with value here. So smash those like buttons if you're excited to hear the playbook for the next few weeks, the overall market direction and recap, altcoins that have huge, huge potential throughout the end of October and into November, and of course, a giveaway. Come on, guys, give it up. It's going to be a great day here. Can I give it one small hint for passwords we need? I could give you maybe a hint. I could give you a hint. Um, let's see here. Going into the comments, shout out positive B, positively B. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I agree. Oh, yeah. Um, let's go. Way to go, Elliot. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure everyone had a good time. All right, let's get this started. I probably got this whole video demonetized with that initial part there. But anyway, Bitcoin's here pumping up. Look, what you need to know here first, and we'll go into this in more detail in a second. Let's go into my roundup here. Again, we're switching up the visuals here, um, trying to optimize for when we release the Elio Trade site, which is going to be super, super awesome. Uh, one of my writers here, Oliver, coming through with the daily roundup, which we're going to go through. And what we want to impress upon you is that, yes, we're seeing some bullish price action, and it seems like scam timber, uh, wreck timber, whatever you want to call it, is over. And then October, and the new highs are looking like they are in our future. This is exactly what I said was going to happen when we were up there at 50, and we started hearing word about the ETF approvals. If ETF approvals go through, there's absolutely zero doubt, zero doubt that we would see some insiders try to dump the bags to get even more coins before that inevitable pump. The games, they never end. The games, they never end. Just know that. So understanding that the games are part of this entire price action, that every single price you see is a game being played by people with more influence than you. And more importantly, my whole theory, my whole approach to how this crypto ecosystem is going to take flight and truly go into the mainstream is based on games, gamification. And we're going to go through this together. It's going to be fun. It's going to be challenging. And for those of you who get through this, I believe you have very much so a ton of rewards ahead of you. So Bitcoin's price has jumped back. It's been painted on the wall for several weeks. If you've been following on-chain metrics, my buddy Will Clemente, people like Willy Wu, it's very obvious that the big money keep buying the supply of free Bitcoins. And so what do you do? You follow the money. Of course, only if you want to be the big money yourself. If you don't, you can go ahead and get scared and sell at the lows. That's something you can do if you want to do that. 
But if you do want to follow that big money and be like the big money, you can't be scared when the price dumps. Those are the opportunities. It takes a while to get used to this. It takes a while to get used to this. I saw some article, by the way, that married men, married men with kids are the ones who panic sell. <laughs> I don't, I don't know why that was funny. I guess it shouldn't be funny because they're like feeding their families. They're trying to be responsible, but apparently they're the number one panic sellers. They're the number one panic sellers. Man, you are my number one favorite YouTuber by far. Thanks for everything you do. See you in the Citadel. Shout out to you, Christian. Thank you. Thank you. So with prices have been uh, in limbo now for a while, it's time to pay attention, right? Because as soon as you get lulled into looking away, as soon as you give up, and this is why as the market turned bearish in May, I don't know if you noticed, but my content uptick went crazy. I started making way more videos. And especially as things got really bloody in September, I made even more videos and even more sort of pushing the updates, pushing the attention to keep you focused. Because most people, when the price dumps, most people on YouTube, most people on Twitter, as soon as the price is up, it's all a bull parade, right? And it's 100x this, 100x that. When the price is down, that's when you see me come out and make, in my opinion, my best content, do my best work, because that is the challenge, is to go against the grain and to be counter-cyclical. Counter Anyone can tell you that it's a big green number. No one can tell you that it's going to be a big green number unless you have conviction. And that's where you see the sort of weak from the strong get separated. But anyway, uh, as we see here, pain will leave once it's done teaching you, says Bruce Lee. Um, we have wrecked capital saying Bitcoin will retrace deep enough to convince you that the bull market is over and then it will resume its uptrend. That is Bitcoin. He said that today and it, it definitely said it here that we've made it above the 21 EMA. Remember price action, these moving averages, the golden crosses, the death crosses. To me, it's totally irrelevant. It's totally irrelevant to long-term price action. It's super relevant to short-term FUD-based, FOMO-based price action. But if you really want to be a savvy investor then you want to look for the dumps on things that are guaranteed to take over like Bitcoin, like Ethereum. And then of course, if you have some really calculated altcoin picks in the specific sectors, juicy L1s, the ETH killers, that's always going to be juicy. We see Moon River now is the, is the new hot kid on the block. But now we also know, just looking at what happened with Axie Infinity today, which we'll talk about in a few minutes, that the game is just beginning. The game is just beginning for crypto gaming right? It's just beginning. And the asymmetric reward here for crypto games and gaming ecosystems is going to completely outstrip anything we've seen before. I believe that strongly. I believe that very strongly. Yeah, work 15 hours a day. Yep. It's been my life for four years, for four years. Um, and then people get mad. Uh, people get mad that uh, other people follow me or, or something like that. I see a lot of salt in the comments of people being like, you just people just follow you. And I'm like, well, I've, I've been working 15 hours a day for four years in crypto. Maybe people would follow you too if you did that. Um, anyway, it's refreshing to see crypto prices do so well on a day when traditional markets are in red territory. And this is partly it, right? Is, is crypto is its own market. It will form its own market structure. However, when there's macro FUD storms in the mainstream markets like S&P, like Evergrande, Evergrande, whatever, you, whatever it's pronounced like, that will have an impact. But for the most part, that's a lot of whale games. Those are whale games. They're trying to stock up. They're trying to maximize their positions. And that is at your expense for the most part. So stock bread, uh, stocks red, BTC up. What happened, guys? Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, and so what we see here again is here, let me get to this. Willy Woo shows you the story here. Willy Woo shows you the story. I'm not going to read this point by point, but you know, in the end, what you're going to see here, and I'm, I'm going to put out all these articles and you'll start getting daily articles from me. Um, but what we're going to start seeing is Willy Wu. what he's showing here is that the whales are just feeding. They are just feeding and feeding and feeding as the price gets fuddy. So the more fuddy the price, the more the whales feed. And as he says, nom, nom, nom. And so as long as you're able to follow the money, which we can do here super easily, you're able to put yourself in a much better position. <laughs> What's up, Jolie World? What's up, Tommy McCarthy? What's going on, Crypto Nerd? How's everybody doing? Shout out everyone in the chat. Make sure you throw in your questions. We're going to get to those in just a second. Uh, we also have Raul Paul saying here, he's pointing out this uh, falling wedge, this wedge pattern here. And he says, look, Bitcoin log chart looks pretty luscious. Who knows if we break the wedge on the first attempt, but consolidation pattern of this magnitude usually leads to very, very powerful upside move. 
And what I like is that Rao has really started to pioneer here the log reading of Bitcoin, which you need to use to understand parabolic network growth. Network growth is exponential because it has to do with the number of users. Look at Facebook. Facebook's value goes up the more people use it. That's what was so powerful is that everyone was on it. And everyone's like, wow, everyone's on this. This is crazy. That's what's happening with Bitcoin. As more and more people join the network, start using it, the, the value is exponential. So the same is true with all crypto networks, not just Bitcoin, of course, Ethereum, of course, being the one that I focus on more, um, but that's true of everything here. And so when you see that it could have a log breakout here, that is very, juice, very, very juicy here. And you see 0.1 million here seems to be a very logical target here. Uh, that would be $100,000 and beyond. I do believe we go beyond that. I do believe we go beyond that, but I would say we're in the red zone there. Again, I'm still looking at Ethereum to break 10,000. I still believe it's going to make it to 20,000 by the time that this bull run, this jig is done. So we also have uh, <laughs> the GM meme continuing. We're not going to get into that. Um, anyway, so what we know here is that positioning in altcoins, and this is the part that I've been literally pounding the pavement about for what feels like forever, which is during a bull market, the safest thing to do is invest in Bitcoin. But we all know that altcoins pump harder. And I have been saying this, that a lot of people are confused about this because I am talking about reallocating to Bitcoin, but not right now. I'm not talking about that right now. Bitcoin will make a move. Then all the entire market, altcoins in specific, NFT projects, DeFi projects, luscious little micro cap alts will go parabolic. But you need to cash those profits in at the end of Q4 because everything after that is very uncertain in my mind as to how long the bullish momentum will last and whether this time is different. And so until others, until proven otherwise, I would take profits off the table because personally, and again, not financial advice, you got to make your own decisions. If you want to let it ride, go for it. But personally, I think it's very, very sensible to take profits off the table. And then if throughout 2022 strength continues and we start seeing, you know, the super cycle that we're all hoping we get, then you still have a ton of resources to allocate and there will be endless opportunities. There is never an end to the opportunities coming into the crypto ecosystem. I don't think for the next maybe 20 years, 30 years, there will be a real end to this opportunities. Obviously, the ones that we have in front of us today in my opinion, by miles outstrip the ones that will come in 10 years from now. So you're super early and you're in a great place. But that's what I think about this current moment we're in, which is ride these alts, nothing changes. But as you know, in the short term, I still think the biggest positioning, the biggest gains will come over the next few days because I still think we'll have more chop until the massive Q4 breakout. I still think we'll have more chop. Um, and that will be really good for NFTs. NFTs go crazy while the market's boring, while the market is stagnant. NFTs go parabolic. That's just what we've seen. I've been covering this trend from for you guys since May. Many of you guys mocked me in the comments. I'm not looking at you in, in specific, but many people mocked me in the comments, didn't want to hear about NFTs. And meanwhile, the amount of gains in NFTs have been embarrassingly good, embarrassingly good. Anyway, this is what I wanted to point out. Matic supply is going down to zero on exchanges at a rapid pace. Volatility about to go through the roof. And my best and my <clears throat> and my best bet, I guess it's my best is it's going up. So yeah, the point here is Matic, which I talk about a lot because it's one of the most underrated chains, I think, in the entire crypto ecosystem. Matic has potential to be on the level of things like Solana, like you know, obviously Moon River is newer, but these two new chains have a, a ton of excitement and Matic's actual user growth. Polygon is fantastic. And what they're doing on a technical level is fantastic. So I think Matic is one of those that I just, I'm, I'm a big fan of and their ecosystem like QuickSwap, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, those projects should have a really, really good Q4. They're kind of, to me, smart, you know, easy, big brain plays to get, you know, many, many, many Xs to the tune of 10, 20, 30 X easily, potentially higher. Uh, obviously Matic will probably not go hundred X. It's too big, um, but it'll go probably 10, 20. So the U.S. is not going to ban crypto. This was another really big thing that we saw was a Jerome Powell statement. What I love is, what I love is over the last few days, we've seen this correction, this corrective talk by regulators. In September, it was all ban, FUD, sue. And now in October, it's, oh, no, we, we didn't mean ban. We were just, that, that was a bad word choice. What we meant was, and then you see Gary Gensler saying, actually, uh, you know, I don't mean they're all private forms of money. I, I guess they're offering something different. That's okay. Maybe or maybe not. And so what you're seeing is 
a backpedaling because there's so much political popularity around crypto. Every politician that talks about crypto, their popularity surges, their donations surge. So why would you want to be against something that's politically so popular? What we'll see over time is that the political popularity of crypto will win. And maybe, maybe stable coins will be regulated. That might be a thing. We all have to be ready for that. Of course, algorithmic stable coins, stable coins that are built off of collateralization, like make or die, like UST in the Terra, the Luna ecosystem, those very well might uh, be hard to regulate because they're sort of different. They're fundamentally different. And if they do not track the dollar, which I think is going to be a really big definition here, does it track the dollar or does it not? Now, out of maybe laziness or ease, universal understanding, everything currently tracks the dollar. But I could see in the future things tracking other buckets of goods, like we saw with the MIM token. Um, that's part of the Abracadabra ecosystem, which I covered for you guys. I think I was the first person here on YouTube to cover that. And those types of buckets of sort of decentralized, collateralized algo stables, I think those could provide a way to sort of get around the categorization of this as a bank account or a similar activity as a money market, I think that there's potential here. And this will push the industry again, more decentralized, less regulated or, or less comparable to your typical bank account. And again, tracking the dollar is kind of dumb. <laughs> like, why are we tracking the dollar if we want a stable unit of account? Brian Armstrong bought, brought this up. Why are we tracking the dollar? Like, isn't the point not to track the dollar? So it's one of those things where it's like, okay, well, if we want something that's stable, frozen in time, then maybe it should be tracking housing, insurance, education, um, a bucket of cryptocurrencies. Maybe that's what stability really is. Um, we will see over time, all of these mechanisms, as you can see, are super, super young. Um, but this is what's going on in crypto land is we're seeing a back <clears throat> a backpedaling of all of the bad wording, bad language that we saw throughout September. So it's very interesting. I don't know if you saw, there was a chat where somebody asked, uh, Gary Gensler was on stage at something like code, code, uh, some, there was like some code convention. Um, and somebody asked him right on spot about language. And he kind of like, he, he didn't seem as harshly worded as he did when he made his sort of edited videos or when he did his Washington Post interview. So I think there's a little bit more shades of gray than we see here. And like I said, you know, this regulatory FUD seems to clear itself up. China FUD always clears itself up every time. Um, and it seems to me as though it would be pretty foolish to not want to be a part of the biggest money, uh, the biggest money industry in the world. The, the, the industry that's literally reinventing money and value as we know it, you'd want that to have an innovative home here in the United States um, and not be in Dubai, right? Because then everyone's going to go to Dubai. Anyway. Yeah, so here we have another politician saying, why do we not use cryptocurrency as the new gold standard? This is exactly the momentum. The momentum of the market is very clear now. It's very clear now. So uh, as federal agencies struggle to agree on digital asset jurisdiction, state legislators are leading the way on cryptocurrency regulation. And Illinois state representative Margaret Croak, D12 district, is the latest example, saying Illinois will soon vote on a bill that will allow financial companies to hold crypto such as Bitcoin. The banking industry in Illinois is very excited about this bill. And usually that doesn't happen. So what you're seeing here again is there's a fracturing and we'll see these new politicians that have the innovators mindset get a ton of capital, a ton of support. And so what we're seeing to me is a changing of the guard where you either join us or we'll support your competition. And we have a lot of money. We have a lot of money to support your competition. A lot of money. I know there's plenty of newly minted millionaires out there that would gladly take a piece of their stack to support a like-minded politician so that they could um, sort of just operate in this industry with a clear mind. We have, e look, I think the ETFs are coming. We have seen some delays. From what I hear, from what I hear, they should be coming in the form of a futures ETF first. And a lot of people are fudding that, but think about the green flag that that sends to the entire industry by knowing that an ETF of some kind has been approved, an ETF of some sort literally paves the way for crypto to have full legalization, to have massive, massive money flow. Sure, there might be more futures sort of shorting and long, like that kind of perceived price manipulation will be a part of this next chapter, just like the CME futures was. But I do believe that this is a massive, massive runway that it creates for Bitcoin. It's part of the crawl phase that we, you know, before we walk and run. Anyway, 
Banks are jumping into DeFi here. Uh, we have Rune Christensen from uh, MakerDAO saying that the largest, the third largest bank in France has just made an onboarding application to Maker for 20 million US dollars backed by Euro uh, EUR bonds proposed by their blockchain subsidy. So this again shows you that not all regulators, not all regulated entities are running away from DeFi and that the banks actually want to be a part of this. So we will see over time, um, more and more banks join this particular movement. And at a certain point, if one bank, you know, it's not just one bank wants it all to go away, maybe the top sort of four banks do, but then you have hundreds or thousands of other smaller banks that are looking for competitive edge. And DeFi provides a competitive edge for those banks that can be first to offering that to their consumers. So think about it that way. It's actually a huge, huge opportunity. So somebody's saying, is there still a chance for people who actually spent time and sleep just for the hunt and all speakeasies but did not get in? This is a Citadel question for those who are asking or wondering rather. And the answer is yes, yes. The games will never end. And I mean that. I tweeted that earlier today. Let me see if I can find this tweet. Um, so first of all, upload for some, some <laughs> with asterisks, some identities will begin. Others may still be earned. So guys, if you follow me on Twitter, you shouldn't need to ask this question. Um, but I also make this very clear. The games will never end. They won't. The games will continue. I believe that gamification is the key to unlocking this industry for everyone. But make no mistake, make no mistake, the Citadel is an experiment. This is actually my brainchild. And I, you know, I, I spoke about it with Alex. We both fell in love with the idea, but I've been thinking about this for a long time because this is what happened um, with everything I've started, which is everyone wants to win the lottery. Everyone wants to either buy their way, their, you know, sort of muscle their way in with money. And so there's just sort of like you either muscle your way in with money or you win something and you get lucky on some kind of drawing. When you have a community of my size, I can't create, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to create an opportunity for half a million people. Or if you, you know, I guess add up my socials closer to a million people, it's hard to create an opportunity for everybody. So with limited spots, which is the way crypto works, there's limit, there's, you know, uh, hard capped scarcity. Essentially, it creates a, a, a gamification layer where you either have, have to be lucky or rich. And so to me, the magic here is that this is a community that's earned. So there are sets of rules. Those rules are clear. People who don't get in will be disappointed. I know everyone spent time. Lots of people spent time. I've spent time. Not a lot of time, but this is, you know, this is definitely a, uh, an experiment I'm running. But obviously, the main, main project that I contribute to is Superform and Elliot Trades. But the point about this is that this has to be a pure experiment. There has to be no handouts. There has to be no um, deference given. There has to be all earned members or else this thing fails. And the whole ethos of this fails. Now, there's other communities that one of which, Superfarm, Elio Trades, which is not like that. It's all about uh, you know being inclusive. So there's different layers here for everybody. Um, and there will always be a chance to earn your way in to the Citadel for the strong, for the people who want to be in. But I don't think it's fair uh, to the people who earn their way in to essentially uh, alter the rules in any way. So we're going to be very, very, very clear about the rules and how we follow them. It has to be that way or else the experiments, the game, it loses all of its credibility. Okay, and one of my favorite projects, Akash Network, is benefiting a lot here by coming closer to Terra um, with this Columbus 5 upgrade. I don't know if you guys have been paying attention, but the Terra blockchain just got a massive upgrade. And so there's, there's a lot coming here. Again, Akash is one of my longer term holds. I have a video showing you how to stake it. The one thing I love about this is that they have a decentralized cloud project. Um, it's one of the best projects, I think, in the space. Very underrated. Full disclosure, I own a lot of it. I hold a lot of it. I run a node publicly. I've never sold any. Um, I bought in around 60 cents. Um, and uh, and yeah, Greg here started Google Firebase. He started Firebase, which was then acquired by Google. So this is a fantastic team, fantastic team that has not only built and developed some of the best cloud infrastructure in the world, but they've also gotten it adopted by a massive network of developers. So they're doing it again, and it's very exciting here. So Akash and Terra, again, 
I, I've been pushing this narrative uh, a lot, right? Because I'm a big fan of what Terra does. I'm a big fan of what Akash does. And I think Cosmos is very underrated as well. They just don't have the best of tokenomics, but that could change, right? All right, that's, a, that's it for the update. Let's jump in. Let's do some more interesting stuff here. Let's talk about some altcoins here. What do we see here except for a massive run here in gaming? And of course, a lot of projects had a nice pump. A lot of projects pumped a lot. I'm going to have a little sip of water. I'm a little uh, parched here. A lot of projects pumped a lot here, but understanding that Axie Infinity is kind of like the chain link here. Uh, as Chainlink pumps, Oracles pump, as Axie Infinity pumps, gaming projects pump, you see UFO, a little baby gem here, back to about where we started covering it. Um, had a nice dip. Again, I, I put this out as a project I was buying the dip on. Um, I have a lot of UFO, have not sold any, don't plan to sell any. Um, and Axie Infinity, again, just showing they did a lot of news. They had an airdrop to early holders. They have a staking program. It's very, very interesting what's going on with Axie. And they're just showing, they're kind of setting the model here for what the future of the gaming industry will be. And so, like I said, this is not a question. There's not an ambiguity here. Crypto is boring. It's heady. You need YouTubers to spend hours and hours breaking it down and explaining it. Games are easy. Games are literally what our brains are programmed to do. Here, let me read. I had another tweet this morning where I talk about this. Um, where is it? The games will never end. Games are embedded into our very brains. We are programmed to play. The gamification of crypto has been my singular obsession for four years. And soon, so, so soon, what I'm working on will change so many lives for the better. Super exciting times ahead. This is what I believe. This is what's been motivating me is that games are the most contagious form of human activity. We don't need to learn anything. We can just go and enjoy them. And by doing this, we can contribute to the largest networks in the world. All of the technology and NFTs uh, in scalable blockchains in DeFi, all of those things can be brought together in the form of a beautiful visual interface that rewards you and incentivizes you for participating. And that is the gamification layer that will trick us all, that will co-opt our positive emotions into contributing and creating positive reflexive actions for all the rest of the world. And this is what's the most beautiful thing that's going to happen over the next five, 10 years. Gamification of crypto is the next hyperwave and blockchain games are the first, not the only, but the first real mega wave here. So a lot coming here, super, super exciting times ahead. We also have billion, uh, where is this? Where is this? DYDX also had more volume than Coinbase. Pretty amazing. Billionaires are bullish. What, what else is new? Let's get, to the, let's get to the coins. So I'm looking at gaming tokens, of course, for this next wave, but mostly this is a sort of long-term view of the world because games are going to be the thing that completely outperforms during the bear market, just like NFTs will. But also games are going to really drive usage and adoption if we do enter into a bear or a winter cycle, which most people think is still the likelihood. I happen to think we probably have another cycle uh, before we go truly like bear proof. Um, but I hope I'm wrong. I certainly hope I'm wrong, but I'm playing my stack in a rational and calculated way just in case. But I'm not worried about the gaming sector. That's why I'm always drawing attention to it. And um, if you are a game developer, so we're going to start doing this right now. If you, have a, if you are a game developer and you have a game that you think is the future of blockchain gaming, the point of this channel, what I've been building here in these communities is the most powerful ignition launch pad for the most important gaming projects, the most important NFT projects in the world. And I'm going to be doing this in various ways. But my literal passion and my purpose here is to bring the world onto blockchain through games and through NFTs. That's been my vision, obviously altcoins as well, but a lot of people cycle through altcoins. I think, you know, obviously most people won't make it just by holding Bitcoin, but altcoins tend to churn people. So I believe that games and NFTs are the way that we can keep most people in the blockchain and actually grow this community to be billions of people. So if you want to be a project featured here on the channel, you want to work with this channel, you want to access this community, then please email my email. I'll actually show it in a second. Um, I'm going to be... I'm going to be reigniting the Elio Trades NFT collection here. I've been waiting for a while to do this. 
Now, the Elio Trades collection was the first NFTs that I've ever created. And this is going to be a huge, huge point of focus going forward. Over the last few months, I've been scaling up the teams, finding the most brilliant people in the entire world to work with me in building the future. And now we've got some amazingly talented folks all around, and I can focus on growing all these buckets at once. Now, these NFT holders will be the people who I want to be focusing on new creators, um, new contributors to the space. And I have a little notepad here. Um, where's the notepad? So I'm turning the Elio Trades collection into a DAO format that will bring new artists and creators into this world. So if you want to be a part of this, email fudlifestyle at gmail. Um, let me make sure I spelled all that right. Yeah, fudlifestyle at gmail and have my time as the subject matter. And my team is going to look at this. And eventually we're going to start having on-chain votes, just like you will vote on content that will appear on this channel that still that tool is about to come out. Um, in the next few, I, I probably later in Q4, and then we can have literally DAO style governance of the channel and the new, the things that the community wants to see from new creators, people who are looking to break in, looking to build their audiences here in crypto land. So if you want to be on the show and you're, and you actually have a video game project, well, we'll put that over and we'll help you get in touch with the Launchpad team over there at Superfarm. Superfarm's gaming Launchpad will become the most important gaming Launchpad in the world and it will bring the biggest video games to the crypto industry and help connect it to the mainstream. Now, the Elio Trades collection, I want to be a sort of megaphone for new creators. And I'm, tr I'm turning everything that I've worked on and I'm passing, I'm passing the keys to the community itself. That's my goal over the next few months is to pass everything to the community and to take all of what I've built here and turn the keys over to you guys. Um, and it's going to be a wild ride. It's not going to be easy. Um, but it's going to be something I'm very, very passionate about and very, very dedicated to. So that's my plan. Um, more info on this. Guys, if you're a creator, email here. Um, if you have a game, if you're working on an NFT collection, if you think you have a blue chip project that is worthy of being a mainstream gaming project, reach out to me. Uh, Fudlifestyle at Gmail, you can reach out here as well. We'll get a dedicated email for this setup, uh, but this one is good enough for now. Downmaker. Downmaker had a nice little breakout today and they've been doing good work. They've had some good launches on there recently. I expect launch pads to come back. When the market heats up, IDOs heat up, they start giving those 50, 100 Xs and everybody wants their piece of the pie. So launch pads will heat up, but just know as fast and as hard as launch pads heat up, they will cool off, right? Launch pad is a full bull mania mode type thing and then it disappears. Full bull mania. Um, and then it disappears, right? Which is why uh, it's important for projects uh, to just to just keep your keep your head screwed on very, very, very well here that you know that these launchpad projects will get extremely, extremely valuable during the peak of the bull run. But then as soon as the bear market hits, they will become just as quickly um, much less relevant. Quick swap again, this is a Matic play, a polygon play. I believe quick swap is one of the easiest bets in the Matic ecosystem. It's like the pancake swap of Matic. Um, I have this in my bag, plan to keep a lot of it. Moon River, um, again, this is the L1 play. And if there's other L1s that spin up, Akala, for example, um, or something like that on uh, the Polkadot ecosystem, those types of early mover projects will do, I think, really, really, really well. And then this is another project I've been hearing a lot about, Vulcan Forged. Um, it hits it checks some of the boxes for me for a play to earn ecosystem. So I wanted to give it a shout out. Again, um, I'm not saying that this one will go up or down. I'm just saying this is one on my radar of uh, projects that I think has good things that you can look at and say, hmm, this might work. Uh, and if you see similar boxes checked in other projects, well, those might be good as well. So I wanted to shout out my buddy uh, 888 Crypto as well. Uh, he's doing a collab with the Cool Cats. This is really, really cool. And essentially the way it works is this inner circle NFT just gets you airdrops uh, from random artists that I assume he's buying. I'm not really sure what the impetus is here, but it's very, very cool stuff. So congrats to 888 for pushing this. It's a very cool project, 888, the inner circle. I wanted to show a couple of NFT projects that have been on my radar. Um, Galactic Apes, this one I actually don't own yet. I was hoping to see it drop a little bit. And um, if it does, I'm gonna definitely grab maybe one or two, maybe three, I don't know. Uh, it's just really cool. It's got this kind of uh, voxelized or it's got sort of like a pixel art, but it's got you know higher resolution 
And uh, yeah, it's it's just cool vibes. What can I say? Um, you know, the Cyber Kongs really like it. So it put me onto it, but I'm just kind of waiting for it to settle. I'm thinking maybe it's just been, uh, it's been on a pump and usually these kind of charts can sometimes settle down a little bit. So if it does, the volume's dropping. I would like to see it uh, come down just a little bit in floor price so I can scoop some up. And Anonymous, I brought you guys Anonymous real cheap, right? Right as I found out about it, it's now crushing it. 4.5 ETH floor price, totally decentralized on chain with yield in the form of Cheath token. And I think the APYs are about 100%. So you make about four and a half ETH from holding one, uh, which is pretty astronomical from Anonymous. Uh, the way this project worked is it was a totally free mint and there was, there was zero percent commissions on resales. And the uh, and essentially, so people minted these for free and now 4.5 ETH. This is the power of being in the right communities, getting the right alpha. Again, got to shout out the Kongs for this. Um, but this is the, I, I think I got in around 0. Uh, 0.6 to 0. 0.8. Um, that was the, the range I entered into. Um, but again, these types of gains over the last month or two, they just don't exist. They do not exist in non-NFT crypto. So if you guys have enjoyed me literally 24 seven diving deep, trying to find the best information and bringing it to you, I don't see a single other channel trying to expose this information to the masses, then please smash that like button. Remember, of course, NFTs are super risky, right? This is not a guaranteed investment. I don't want you guys coming back to me if we hit a bear market and saying, gosh, my anonymous aren't so valuable. I don't know what the future of this project is. I'm just sharing stuff with you as I'm doing it and I'm exploring with you. Yet the exploration and the excitement, when I get excited about things, I find that's the most fun time when I actually am genuinely stimulated and having fun, like I was with the Nifty, uh, the Nifty DGENs project. I also heard about this project earlier. It's called the Surreals. Um, I think it's minting soon. Uh, anyway, it just looks cool. I have no idea if they're gonna be worth any money, but it looks really artsy, really fun. Um, pretty, pretty absolutely aesthetic. Uh, if you guys like art, surreals.io. Uh, and then this one, the non-fungible fungi. This project will probably be really hard to get into. They're selling only a hundred Genesis mushrooms um, and that's how they're gonna pay for their expenses and stuff. Um, very, very cool. Uh, the expenses or not the expenses. Very, very cool. This drop, I bet a hundred, it's going to be really, really hard to get your hands on one. Uh, however, then they're going to do a 10,000 drop here. Let me see if I can, uh, share this. I don't know if the audio is going to share. Um, but they just have this really, really good looking NFTs. You can see the textures. This is really high quality 3d art, really nicely animated. Um, yeah, here, there you go. Who doesn't love a mushroom? Look at that wizard mushroom, just cool stuff. I don't know if they're going to be worth anything. I don't know if they're going to go up or down in value, but I'm just sharing stuff that I find cool as I find it. Um, oh, this was also really interesting. We had the CryptoPunks floor price Oracle being adapted here uh, into Chainlink or being integrated into Chainlink. And it's part of this project called JPEG, where they're essentially taking the floor price and they're allowing you to borrow against it. This is part of nft fi for lack of a better term, which is really problematic to establish values for NFTs. But once you do that, if there's a liquid enough market like CryptoPunks, and you know what a value, a sort of base level value for that CryptoPunk is, then it makes sense that you should be able to borrow some money against it if you use it as collateral, because it's a thing of universally agreed value. Just like I can borrow against my house, I can borrow against my car and my sort of assets that have some kind of very clear market value. I can now borrow against my crypto punk. And this is a huge, huge unlock um, for NFTs. And this is just the beginning. There's a lot of projects working in this space. It's definitely something I've been really, really thinking about for a long time. I've actually mentioned it um, here on the channel several times, which is, of course, being able to collateralize your NFTs. Think about playing a video game, earning a bunch of really valuable NFTs, and then being able to take out a loan and buy a house something like that. Like that's not even the craziest thing I've ever heard, right? So um, I'm just using that as a total hyperbolic example. You know, maybe you, maybe you don't want to buy a house, but at the same time, maybe you need some money uh, for bills. Maybe, you, maybe you're paying tuition in college. I don't know. But the point is that if you can earn real money collateralizing your NFTs and still not relinquish control over them, like you can actually get them back by replaying, uh, repaying the principal, that is really, really interesting. That is really, really interesting. All right, it's time. Time. I'm going to hop in. I'm going to answer some questions. Um, let's go ahead and chat with the community here. By a Lambo. Yes, indeedy. Um, is Sunday mint day? You're going to have to refer to the Twitters for that. Uh, uh, I want you guys to follow the information. If you can't follow the information, guys, it's going to be really, really hard for me 
to help you get into the Citadel. Part of this is making this hard. I'm sorry, but part of the experiment is making it hard. I hope you guys understand why we're doing this. Please look at Galactic Geckos. Uh, 100,000 soul volume in seven days, $10 million a lot. Um, is soul overrated? This is a pretty hard question to unwind. Uh, the reality is, is that Solana is very highly rated. It's also very, very successful. What matters most to me is network effect. Network effect is 99% of the battle. So the fact is Solana has a massive, massive network effect. Users, developers, investors, Sam, FTX, the Wayne Brady's, the, or not Wayne, Brady, the Tom Brady's, <laughs> Wayne Brady too, who, who knows? Um, but the point is that their sort of mainstream cultural impact. They just, or FTX just sponsored uh, the Mercedes racing team. And so now you have these mainstream or F1 racing team. And so now you have these mainstream crossovers that very few other blockchains are doing. And I have to think that Sam's sort of millennial nature, understanding sort of influencer marketing and just, just culture, um, you got to think that there's something there. There's definitely something there. Um, did I get into Galaxy Eggs? I don't have Galaxy Eggs, but they're really cool. Can you explain the benefits of being on a whitelist of an NFT? Yeah, it means that you can mint. Um, is the Atari token a good gaming project? Um, no, I don't. I mean, not not in my view. Um, what do you think about Bastard Gan Punks? I have some Began Punks. Um, I'm not a big Began Punk holder, but I just sit on them. I'm a much bigger Disto Punk holder. I have a lot of Disto Punks, um, and I'm really excited for that. They just announced their sandbox integration. Uh, Disto punks are the are, are the ones that I invested a lot into. Uh, Began punks are still kind of hanging around though. Um, okay, I think I got through all the super chats. Cool. Um, do you know Gods Unchained? They are launching their token soon. Yeah, well, I'm a big uh, I'm a big investor and believer in Immutable. Um, Super Farm uh, is going to be integrating into Immutable. There's a big announcement coming very soon. We're in the final stages of testing there, um, and uh, and yeah, uh, so I'm a big fan of Immutable. Um, but that's uh, that's not the Gods token. I don't know about the Gods. I haven't looked at the the tokenomics of the Gods and Chain token, but I'm assuming it's a play to earn model. To be clear. You don't buy play to earn coins. You earn play to earn coins. You're buying something that other people are getting for free. So know that if you're buying something other people are getting for free, you're doing it wrong. You should be earning something for free. Yes, yes, there is. You got to stay at it. You got to keep working, but there will be, yes. Phantom in five years, uh, probably uh, higher, bigger, I'm guessing. Yes, shout out to 888. Go, guys, go follow 888 Crypto. He's awesome. Superlative Secret Society. No, I'm not in it. Yeah, Artifact is cool. I like Artifact. It's a cool project. Um, definitely a cool project. Yeah, I own some Doge Pounds. I own some Doge Pounds. Harmony One is cool. They're all right. They're like, you know, one of those sort of uh, B or C tier and uh, layer ones. They just... They're just like really behind on the network effect. So like, will they pump in the sort of blow off top bull run? Of course, of course they will, because they have a lot of tech and all that stuff. But it's not clear to me what the angle is. Look how hard it is even for Solana. They had their consensus issues. They've had a lot of uh, setbacks. And just building that network effect of users and developers is the biggest thing. It's really hard to do. It's not just money alone. It's not just money alone. Trust me, it's not money alone. Thoughts on winter bears? Yeah, they are cute. I don't have any. Do I have any Omi or Vive collectibles? I've definitely experimented a little bit with them. Um, look, they have all the licenses. I think it's great. And I think that they're sort of one way to approach the crypto sphere, which is to go after the big licenses, it's kind of like a dapper approach. Um, but I'm not, I'm not uh, ultra, ultra long on Omi. Um, but they've done well up to this point. I just think that licenses are these things that like everyone's going to eventually get, right? Is is 
especially the big players now, the Disney's and all those people, they're coming into NFTs and they're going to do their own thing. So eventually those licenses will be everywhere. Um, it's sort of my belief. I'm a huge, huge believer, huge believer that the Web3 native IP, the native blockchain IP, the original, like the Axie Infinities, the Board Ape Yacht Clubs, the original games built for the blockchain, some IP and stuff that I've seen come out recently, you know, SUP Ducks, those types of things, those are going to be the best chance at decentralized, you know, uh, you know, Disney, Marvel, whatever, those are going to be the best chance. The things that start as blockchain native, right? That's the biggest chance. Obviously, MetaHero is trying to do like a superhero version of that, uh, Pixel Vault or Punk's Comics rather. So I think that that's a big, big part of this. And to me, I, I tweeted this today. Let me find the tweet. Um, I tweeted a lot today. If you guys have not been following me, you're missing out on all of my tweets. Makes me sad. Makes me sad. There we go. Decentralized Fortnite. This is my, that is my obsession and it starts with you. Literally, I have not been able to put this out of my brain for four years, which is since the last bear market, I was very clear. It was very clear to me that games would be the mainstream on-ramp. Fortnite being the biggest, most, I think that Fortnite is the ultimate social digital experience that's generational, that involves all kinds of cultural impact, huge player base. It hits a lot of hierarchy of Maslow's human needs. It's also competitive. I don't play a lot of Fortnite, but I'm just saying decentralized Fortnite. That is my obsession. And it starts with you guys. I am doing everything I can to make the decentralized Fortnite what starts with you. That is, in, that is going to be owned by you guys. And so this is my mission. And to me, it's not even about me, right? This is about building the community. And together, we will go so much further than one group of developers. And that's how we create the paradigm shift is by turning over the memes of production to you guys. And I believe that. It is not the Decenter browser I'm using. I do love the Decenter browser. I'm still a pleb using Google Chrome. I do use Brave a lot, but I will try to use Decenter more often. I hold a big bag of Decenter. Um, it's been sort of, it, the Decenter price action is just disappointing to me. I don't know why it doesn't pump. It should pump way more in my opinion. Not financial advice, just I've been long it. I have a, I think a six figure bag of Decenter. So it's, <laughs> it's definitely something I want to see pump. Um, but at the same time, you know, I just don't understand why Brave is so much, or I guess, you know, you have Brendan Eich, but like Bat to me is ripe for disruption and Decenter checks all the boxes. It just doesn't have a big enough community. Either way, if, if Decenter goes 100x, I definitely warned you. But at the same time, it's just been very, very lazy, uh, the price action. It's, it's an amazing project though. They've really crushed it. So congrats to the Decenter project. I've been, uh, I've been, I, I expect better things from the price. I think Flashburn has the best comment here, which is smash the likes, guys. Almost an hour here, almost 50 minutes here of nonstop alpha leak. And I think some of the most important content here, exactly giving you my keys, my plan for how I'm going to extract maximum value from this market over the next few months. And I think over the next few months, if you play your cards right, especially if you're someone who's looking to sort of build up their first piece of financial freedom to maybe move out on their own, to maybe feel financially stable, or just to get your sort of feet into the waters here in crypto, this is the time. Right? These cycles only come around so often. We had a big move at the end of last year. We had a huge move in middle 2020. We had a nice move in 2019. Um, it seems like maybe once a year you get this. And it feels like right now we're at our big, I feel like it's the big show right now. I could be wrong, but I feel like over Q4, we're going to see fireworks. So smash the like, guys, because I think this is an amazing, amazing time to be here. Please destroy those like buttons. Let's share this content with more people. Rune, what do I think? I love Rune. I love Rune. It's a great project. And you always buy the FUD on Rune. Let me see, where's Rune at right now? Yeah, so this thing has been struggling, right? This thing has been struggling. Yeah, it was up here at like, what was that, 11 bucks? It definitely got hacked and exploited. It had all these negative sort of events. It's coming down off a $20 high. Seeing it get to uh, its all-time high and then maybe a 2x over that in Q4, that would be, that would be I think, fair. 
right? So it would get to about three times two, maybe a six X, maybe a 10 X from here throughout Q4. I wouldn't be surprised. It's a really good project, really good project. Again, I've been covering Rune since 30 cents, guys, 30 cents. So even here, it's up, you know, 20 plus X, 23 X or something. It was up as high as, you know, ridiculous. Am I the one with 24 Moon Sama in, in one wallet? No, it's not me. And if it was, I wouldn't tell you. If I had $1,000 starting out, what would be my next moves for the next three months? Elbow, pump, elbow bump? Elbow bump? Is that, is that that? Is that what that is? All right. So this is something I get asked a lot. If I had a thousand bucks and that was really all I had to play with, I would probably go and try to make as much money as I could with it. Then again, I am always very, very on the sort of higher spectrum of risk. If you want to make sure that that $1,000 uh, sort of entry uh, into this world grows, you can get a, a piece of a Bitcoin or an Ethereum, um, and then you could grow maybe 10, 20, 30 X from here over the next few years. I think Ethereum has an easy five to five to seven X this cycle, and then we'll probably come down again. Then we'll go up again. I think Ethereum 50, uh, 50 to hundred thousand dollar target over time is very reasonable to me. Um, but understand that that would mean that you're having maybe a 10 X, you're going to get to like a $10,000 total stack. If I had a thousand dollars and I really wanted to make money, I'd be minting an NFT. I'd be minting a good NFT. I'd do a lot of research. I'd get into every discord I could. I'd learn as much as I could. And I'd try to get into an NFT mint that I thought for sure was at least going to have one or two days of hype. And then if I double, triple, quadruple over that first day, like look at Habo Hotel. Habo Hotel hit like one Ethereum over the last few days and it minted at 0.22. Um, Bears Deluxe went up to like 0.6 or 7 and I minted at 0.2. Um, and uh, then we have like the, the examples are everywhere. And so if you wanted to take that thousand and make it four or 5,000, that would be the quick, like you, you want to have a flip and now you have four or 5,000 bucks. You can now buy maybe a little bit of ETH kind of spread out your bets. But I think NFTs for the next little bit are the easiest way to multiply your money. And then once you multiply your money out, you can start diversifying into something that's a little bit more obvious, like Ethereum, like Bitcoin. Um, that's how I would do it again. Not financial advice. You guys got to make your own decision. When next big move for Super Farm? Oh, so, so many hours of my day are consumed by contributing to build out the team that is pushing for more decentralization and tooling here. It has been a very, very amazing journey that, that I've grown a lot through. But Q4 is the Woodstock here for Super Farm Protocol. And there's going to be a bunch of things that are being built on top of it. The game the marketplace, the open sea com uh, competitor that is completely community owned, the DAO models, they're all coming to the forefront here. And everything I've learned and everything I've been obsessed with in the NFT industry over the last few months, all of that is coming to the center here. And it starts with you guys. It's all going to go into your hands, everything. And so um, the next big move for Super Farm, there will be an integration into Immutable X. That's a little bit of a sneak peek for you. That is going to be a big piece of news. I'm going to be pounding the table once that happens. And that's just the beginning of you know all of the feature set rollouts. Um, which will happen. And as they happen, I will explain them and why they are happening and why they're important. And it will become the community, I think, for complete end-to-end -end education and adoption of NFTs. Most people have no idea what they're doing with NFTs. And Super Farm is going to be the community that welcomes them, helps them get from zero to 10, and helps them really become experts in not only why this stuff matters, but why it's important to support certain collections. And together, this community is going to go super far. And, uh, and the projects that are built on top of Superfarm, I believe, are going completely owned, completely owned by the community, from feature sets to protocol revenues, DAO treasuries. It's all going to be a super interesting thing. Again, these are all going to be decisions that, uh, that you'll see uh, made by token holders over the next few days and weeks. I'm so excited to push the boundaries here of what community ownership looks like. Uh, and yeah, I mean, look, there's been a lot that's gone on behind the scenes and I've been pushing every single day, every single day for what you guys are about to see happen. 
uh, and it's been extremely, extremely stressful. So <laughs> I'm super proud of it. I'm super happy. And, uh, and yeah, just know like Neo Tokyo, the stuff we're doing with Alex, like that's a, that's an experiment. That's a super, super cool thing that's happening. And I believe that experiment will ripple into the future and impact every NFT project going forward. But nothing, nothing has stopped even for a second my laser focus on what it means to push for the next steps for the Superform protocol. DAOs and community ownership, definitely FTW. I'm going to check on a couple of super chats here. Okay. Thank you so much, Matthew Morrison, for the kind words. I appreciate you. Good luck. Uh, I have 5K I need to, and I need 20K. What do I buy? Again, like I said, I've been placing a lot of my bets. Uh, the plays I've been placing my most bets are AVAX ecosystem, the Joe token. Remember, I called you guys on the Joe token. I still think there's a lot of gas left in Joe. Um, AVAX in general, to me, it's like the next Solana. Um, Phantom ecosystem. Um, and then also, obviously, I covered Phantom for you guys at three cents. Um, and then if you want, to me, it's like NFTs are the place to play. There's so much excitement and the way this, the, they're also super illiquid. And that means that if you are really aggressively playing the game, you can get some great flips in because you might be one of the only people even selling. A lot of people don't sell. I don't really sell that much because I, I know that the next crypto punks, the next board apes, the next life changing sort of world impactful IP is being created here. And I'm willing to take unrealized, I'm willing to lose unrealized gains for the potential of owning a piece of decentralized Disney. That's my particular, that's like my mindset. But I actually have the luxury of being highly liquid. I, I've been in this industry full time now. Um, for over four years. And so I've had the I've built up my portfolio and I've been able to take these risks. Now, for people who aren't able to take those risks, when they get into something like a Habo Hotel Mint or a Habo Avatars Mint and it goes 5X, you should probably be selling. Probably be selling. But for me, I'm holding because I want to see maybe this becomes huge, right? That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Views on Lost Poets. This is my super third super chat. Please respond. I'm so sorry, brother, that I missed your three super chats. Um, yeah, Lost Poets, again, I just don't like when, like, I don't like when projects mint that much, when they take that much liquidity out of the ecosystem. I'm sure, like, Pac is, like, a legendary artist. All respect to Pac. I just really don't like when projects take, in this case, $70 million out of the ecosystem. Like, when stuff is trading peer-to-peer, -peer, that, e that money tends to get recycled right back into the NFT ecosystem and it get, makes everything stronger, right? Those higher, uh, the higher liquidity, the higher trading volume, the enrichment of the community, now things keep getting recycled, but then you have big sort of like, you have some really big sales that have drained the liquidity from the ecosystem. And as much as I love Bored Apes, the Mutant Ape Yacht Club, that just was like, they took $90 million, sent it to FTX and sold it. And it was like, you know, that's not going back into the ecosystem. That liquidity is gone. And we saw a micro bear throughout the next few months uh, or next few weeks, really, because essentially the liquidity got drained. So I think that this stuff is as much as I want to see decentralized Disney. I also don't want to see liquidity get drained that hard, that fast. It's very, very, in my opinion, counterproductive for the industry. I do want to apologize to Subdux. I did say that Subdux drained $30 million from the ecosystem. That's not true. It ended up being more like $9 million or $8 million. So I want to apologize to the Subdux. I'm a big Subduck holder, big fan. I thought the King Frog drop uh, drained third, like closer to, I thought they sold closer to one ETH. I was wrong. So I apologize. Big shout out to uh, Subducks and King Frogs. I hope everyone is going to make it there. And like I said, Frankie Nines has done an amazing job with that art. <clears throat> All right, guys, this is it. We've done so much together. It's Friday, AMA Friday. Did you guys have a good time? I had a great time. Hope you had a great time. My name's, oh, 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 what am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? I promised, I promised, I promised I would give stuff away. So let's give away some hardware wallets because I have not given away enough hardware wallets, right? I've not given away nearly enough hardware wallets. So let's go ahead. We're going to generate a number, two, good number. We're going to go to my videos. Bitcoin, uh, Oracle sees the future. Really cool video. Great video. I don't know if you guys have watched it, but I would watch this one again and again. And uh, let's go to the random comment picker YouTube. Let's go ahead and pick some comments. Not just one. But we're going to give away five, five hardware wallets to atone for my sins of forgetting always to give these away. All right. 419 of you 
individual unique commenters, it's filter duplicates actually, 400 of you, five ledgers, that's better than a 1% chance here. Go ahead. Ooh, wait, let me get the comments again. Smash up those likes, five ledgers. Let's make it happen. Unless you say something mean and troll me. First, that's not a troll. Raziel Sakura, email me on Telegram at Elio Trades. Don't spam me on Telegram, please. It's super annoying. And I will I will make sure that if you guys, or, or Raziel, I'm going to make you confirm your identity so no fakers, I'll sniff you out. I've sniffed out every faker before. Can't fool me. Um, all right, Raziel, congratulations. Let's select another winner. We have LFG by Matty Pini, Hawaii Mortgage Loan Officer. Guys, check out Hawaii Mortgage Loan Officer. This, uh, this segment has been sponsored by Hawaii Mortgage Loan Officer. Thank you guys so much for your constant support. Matt Pini. <laughs> All right, I'll accept this one. Uh, Anand Apu, buy baby cake and do videos on baby cake. It's a very good token in future. It will went $4 in short time. Shout out to you. An Anand Apu, hit me up on, te on Telegram at Elio Trades. Get your ledger. Anyone reckon plan B might be a mega whale who predicts the prices then moves the price to uh, quantum VJ? I absolutely reckon you might be right. Absolutely. It's almost uncanny how well this guy has predicted uh, the movements of the market. That's just, it's just mind boggling. So quantum VJ, hit me up on Telegram at Elliot Trades. Can't claim your ledger. Christopher Milan, Nifty League, LFG. Shout out Nifty League. Shout out Christopher Milan. Um, how many was that now? How many did we give away? Guys, how many did we give away? Was that four or five? Four or five. Well, we're giving away another one. I don't care. Um, and we have Haley. Great video. Thanks for preparing us with a strategy and education. Haley, hit us up at Elio Trades on Telegram. I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. I think that was five, right? That was five. Um, anyway, uh, so there you have it. We have an amazing pump in the market, but I'm expecting more volatility. Don't think for a second that the games are over. They are never over. The games never finish in crypto as in life, and they will never finish here on the charts. So there's never such thing as a straight elevator to the top. It's always a rocky road. Be prepared for that. I'm expecting all-time highs this year for sure. So if we go down to the 30s, see it as a gift. It's still in the cards. It's still possible. So don't be one of those temporary bears every time we go down and we test the lows. I do believe that the games will continue. I believe that we're all going to make it, and I believe that alt season is right around the corner. I'm playing my NFTs and getting liquid at the end of October to ride this glorious alt season to Valhalla. Look for tons, tons more updates around the decentralized Fortnite, which I'm so excited to turn the keys over to you guys, as well as experiments that I believe will truly empower the world here of new artists and creators. Email me, fudlifestyle at gmail.com. If you guys want to be a, a new artist featured here for this community, helping boost you and 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 launch you into this NFT space. Um, this is going to be an amazing new chapter. If you're a video game project here in this industry, I want to hear from you. It is my life's purpose to help the good video game projects get noticed by a global audience, and I will not let the good ones slip through the cracks. So if you are a video game, if you are a video games project, I want to hear from you. I want to help you. Well, that's it. Thank you so much. I'm Elio Trades. You can find me on Twitter at Elio Trades. The link is in the description. I'll see you very soon on the next episode.